So when the Hammer of the Emperor brings their absolute best to the field, what kind of units get put on the table? Let's take a look at just a few of the absolute best Astra Militarum lists around, defeating aliens and superhumans to claim victory for the Guard. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Astra Militarum, and in this video I thought it would be fun to check in on how the top guard lists are performing in 10th edition, and what the best players around are using to get wins in, in the cutthroat competitive environment of grand tournaments. Let's talk a little bit about the Imperial Guard in 10th edition more generally, then go through 4 individual lists, and take a look at some of the units that they're using in detail. So, so far in 10th edition, the Astra Militarum maybe aren't having quite as good a time of it as some armies out there, their win rate's around about 45% at grand tournaments, certainly on the lower end of the power spectrum there, though like the majority of 40k armies at the moment, not so out of the running that games aren't worth having. Fortunately, game balance in general is just a lot better than it was at the very start of the edition when it was a bit of a train wreck. Since the balanced data slate update, the Imperial Guard did get a little bit stronger, their wins were more around the 43% sort of level. They did receive really quite a lot of buffs to units that were struggling more, but also did get handed a few choice nerfs as well to things like artillery and sentinels, which arguably I think were a bit under-costed really, and at pressing other things in the index. Despite being objectively one of the weaker armies in 40k at the moment, they are still getting some wins in though, some people are managing to make them work at big tournaments. I noticed there's been at least 4 big event wins since the balanced data slate, with big events of 5 rounds or more and people are still choosing to bring them along, they're around about 10th most popular faction at bigger events currently out of the overall 26 from 40k, though admittedly Guard being really quite a popular army that is maybe a little bit lower than they would be if they were just consistently strong. At the moment they only have access to the one detachment with the born soldiers from the combined regiment, the main feature of that may be more being their reinforcements more so than the lethal hits when units are stationary, I do feel that that rule is maybe just a little bit underpowered for the faction in general right now. It's all very well for artillery and maybe certain ranged guns that might be able to stay still for a turn, but a lot of the time you're going to be needing to move to get to objectives or get line of sight and things, unless you're playing on quite a light cover table, movement is just going to have to be kind of necessary. I do quite like the way that it can make last guns and special weapons unusually savage though, the few times when it does make sense just to stand and shoot and deal maximal damage. At a competitive list, there's definitely a few units that just crop up time and time again. Lord Solar Leonta seems to be basically auto-include for his orders, repositioning and command points that he brings. We'll get onto him in a second. Kastjan Jungle Fighters have really come through as now an actually credible competitive infantry unit. Seems that all you need to be is super cheap and have the scout keyword and you're well worth including over the fancier infantry types. Artillery remains good with Basilisk, Manticores and a few others shining through. Tank commanders leading Rosses or Dawns into battle generally do some good work for direct damage. Scout Sentinels are still great even up at 60 points, and Gaunt's Ghosts and Calidus Assassins are often employed to be jumping round the table doing secondary objectives. Beyond that though, I really would say that the Guard Codex isn't in such a bad place in terms of internal balance. Maybe on the competitive scene, big blocks of 20-man infantry squads aren't as common as they were, even Krieg ones with medics and feel no pains and Psychers for a 4 plus invulnerable save, they do seem to have dropped off a bit currently. And there are still some things in the Codex that are definitely overcosted. things like the Death Strike and the Valkyrie in particular come to mind. Still though, compared with a lot of factions out there, internal balance really isn't that bad. It's maybe just a shame that quite a few elements of the Codex are pretty usable, but the overall picture just isn't really outright strong at the moment. I think they could do with just gaining a little bit of overall strength. Let's take a look at a few army lists employed by top players to win big events or come very close. And first off, I thought it might be interesting to take a look at the two guard lists that came second and third at the really big Warzone Atlanta last weekend. This first one by David Purcell, six wins to one loss, and their only loss against Eldari round five. I'd say perhaps the biggest standout feature for this list is a load of tank commanders. Three tank commanders with demolisher cannons, multi-melters and last cannons heading up the list. Really quite a lot of scary threat there. And the tank commanders might be in a place to throw orders on other vehicles nearby. That Lehman Ross Executioner should be safe for orders, and they could help out the Sentinels or Chimeras, or even perhaps the artillery before they've moved up to close in. These guys are going to be packing some serious firepower when they die as well, with their shoots and death special rule. I remember Vengeful Salute and how impactful that could be in 9th edition. Just getting a big burst of damage in the enemy turn can be really quite game changing, particularly if it kills something important that was just about to fire. Otherwise, there's the plasma death of the Lehman Ross Executioner for some good high AP anti-infantry killing, that also takes multi-melters. 
Lord Solar Leontus to farm up some command points and maybe give some orders to the Basilisk and Manticore that are sitting at the back for some solid Ignore's line of sight firepower that will be getting their lethal hits and the Basilisk can slow things down. Three sets of Katachan jungle fighters, two of which look like they're mounted in chimeras for some scouting goodness up the field. Those units are just really nice objective grabbers, somewhat tough in the chimera and actually do a fair bit of damage to enemy lighter units and very very cheap at just 125 points for the overall offering. Perhaps the other one might be used as a bodyguard for Lord Solar or the Platoon Command Squad. There's one of those sat at the back with the Master Vox to be able to spam out some orders at long range. Could be handy for reaching some other things that venture further afield. Then there's a unit of six Borgrims with Brute Shields and Mauls. Games Workshop has reduced them to the extent where I think they're really quite effective now. Four plus invulnerable saves and a bit of counter charge punch that Guard are otherwise lacking. They do seem to be at least fairly common includes. Then three Scout Sentinels with Las Cannons. Nice and disruptive and can mark targets for reroll ones to hit. They're also extra good for buffing artillery and also just being generally tough. And one Kalatus Assassin that can jump on and off the board, going around claiming secondary objectives as well as ruining an opponent's stratagem. Looks really quite fun to play overall. Lots of really big direct damage with those tank commanders and the executioner. Some strong and ignores line of sight. A big tanky unit in the Bulgrins that will be a painful prospect to try and scrap with over a midfield objectives and a whole bunch of objective takers for primaries and secondaries beyond that. To focus in on a couple of units, Lord Solar is pretty much ubiquitous, 125 points for the combined prospect of three orders to anything that you want. You can order Auxilia like those Borgrim for example if you needed to, and is the most efficient single source of tank orders as well. Otherwise he can allow you to redeploy three units, which can be massive for things like those demolisher tanks perhaps ensuring that they get the jump on the opponent rather than the other way around, and they're not just going to get Alpha Strog off the table. Otherwise, he also generates you a command point each turn, which can be kind of handy for reinforcements, or things like Fields of Fire to upgun your firepower, and he can be a bit of a counter-charge threat in himself. He should be able to hold his own against lighter infantry or units of Space Marines. He does have a fair few damage to attacks. Kind of hard to go wrong with, really. Otherwise, Tank Commanders are the other main feature of the list, the Demolisher Cannon really is pretty fearsome at a whole bunch of attacks at Strength 14, AP 3 and Damage D6. And these things are going to go down very painfully when they're shot. They get to fire on death on a 2 plus and hopefully vaporize something just about to charge or do damage. All very nice. And it's kind of fun to have that on the go as opposed to the Ignores Modifier type thing that the regular Demolisher gets. Moving on to the list that placed third at the same event. This one was by Chris Daly who again managed a 6 and 1 streak. A bit of a comeback following a defeat in the first game, it looked like. This one does have a fair few similar elements to the previous one, but fewer tank commanders. It's still got Katachan, still got Lord Solar and a platoon command squad, and it still has the big club squad of Borgren. Otherwise, for variations though, the tank commander with the demolisher takes a grand strategist for an extra tank order, so he could be ordering both of those rogue or dawn tanks that are here. Really quite dangerous general purpose tanks, putting a whole load of wounds on the board. These ones are armed with the pulverizer cannon and multi melter sponsons, so going maximum on the big hitting threats, and also even taking melter guns up close. Otherwise, they're also backed up by a regular Lehman Ross demolisher, and interestingly, a Lehman Ross eradicator. Haven't really seen too many of those being played on the table. I guess it is a nice cheap Ross chassis, and it does have pretty similar damage outputs to a few of the others if it is firing against the right target. Otherwise, Gaunt's Ghost make an appearance here. Lists often tend to use either them or the Kaladus Assassin to have things to return to reserves and then turn up again to do secondaries. And there's also the appearance of a Cyclops Demolition Vehicle as well. Kind of fun for a random cheap nothing a unit for 25 points. Could be a dirt cheap secondary doer and have the option to just blow up for a few mortal wounds if that made sense. Gaunt's Ghosts are again a really common include in Guard Army list these days. At 100 points they don't really do all that much damage for their cost. A cool sniper rifle, a big auto cannon and then a whole flurry of strength 3 attacks at range and melee, but what they're really there for is being an annoyingly hard to kill lone operative type unit that can't be shot outside of 12 inches. They've got 2 wounds and stealth if you do get that close, and then as mentioned they do have the rule to ping on and off the board, turning up to do secondaries or potentially even threaten charges to deny primaries late in the game. Rogaldon battle tanks are definitely considered as one of the stronger tanks that the guard have to offer as well. They dropped down to 260 points in the lance balance update, 18 wounds worth of toughness 12 armour is really quite hard to shift unless you've got lots of dedicated anti-armour, and I would likely agree that that would be the loadout I'd normally take, 
with the oppressor cannon pulverizers and the multi-melter sponsons. Might be a little bit more debatable between the melter guns or the extra stubbers perhaps for the bonus armament. You can get quite a lot of extra shots with those stubbers. Next up we've got a more artillery and infantry focused list. This one by a Martin Cooper who used this to take Peterborough Slam GT going 5 and nil against a field of 30 players. Again I might skim over the slightly more standard stuff. There's Lord Sobar, Gaunt's Ghosts, a platoon command squad once more though this one taking Grand Strategist and Regimental Attaches. Grand Strategist is quite nice to broadcast two orders over quite a long distance. And again there's the pairing of a tank commander with a Demolisher Cannon plus a Rogal Dawn tank. Between those two they do have some pretty nasty direct damage. There is also a Calidus Assassin as well, and between her and the Gaunt's Ghost that's a lot of redeploying secondary threat. Should make it very easy to get some very high in-game scores there if you can handle the primaries. There really is quite a lot more infantry in this one though. Four units of Castan Jungle Fighters for some good screening with Flamers and things. One Cadian Shock Troop Squad and one Death Corps of Krieg Squad, each packing Melter Plasma and the Death Corps gets a Grenade Launcher as well. And then one unit of 10 Kazakin with two Melters, two Plasma, the Melter Mine, the Hotshot Marksman Gun and the Sergeant Upgrades. I'll admit I'm not sure 100% on the character attachments with there. I guess Ursula Creed and the Platoon Command Squad attached to two of those. Maybe Ursula Creed with the Kazakin as she allows the units to be double orders. Kind of cool to see some foot Kazakin on the table in any case. Talking of Creed, she's able to generate free battle tactics stratagems which could be pretty nasty for that Fields of Fire one. Getting you some extra AP with your firepower. Potentially helping out the artillery maybe. And there definitely is some scary artillery here. Two Basilisks and two Medusa Carriage Batterers. Basilisk good for damage to things and slowing stuff down. The reducer carriages are just generally dangerous. High strength and high AP that are better than normal for hitting enemies that are really quite tough like vehicle profiles. Finally there's a cheap unit of screening rattlings and a single unit of Tempestus Scions. Again helpful for forward deploy and secondary type things. The rattlings could help screen enemy infiltrators and get some board control. Overall looks like a really good fun list to play with and really quite balanced as well. Lots of infantry, some big tanks and some good artillery. Perhaps a particular emphasis on loads of units running around the table to score things. Seeing as they've cropped up in the first three lists, the Kaschan Jungle Fighters are 55 points. It has been kind of interesting watching them go from zero to hero given the 10 points cut. Previously not many people were taking them even if you could do some scout move things with them. The loss of special weapons and med packs versus Krieg was just a bit too painful. But now you are getting basically 5 to 6 point guardsmen out of them. And ones that can move up the board pretty early and take up positions near primaries, they are generally seen as worth it, plus they can potentially threaten a little bit of overwatch with flamethrowers if it makes sense. They do get some small melee boosts with extra strength and extra AP, but they're still not really going to do all that well in combat. Otherwise the Basilisk is definitely a staple for Ignore's line of sight firepower. 135 points with a whole bunch of strength 8, AP 2 and damage 2 shots, quite nice for clearing out space marines from objectives. They work extra well with Sentinels marking the way for them, or Lord Solar giving them plus one to hit. The Earthshaker rounds can be really quite big to try and keep enemy units out of the game as well. Minus two to move advance and charge could be really disruptive, particularly on a melee unit. This isn't the sort of thing that enemy Terminators trying to foot slog into combat really want to get hit by. Finally for our last list, here is one by Lucas Duchesne, who used it to take first at the Hogtowner 2023 GT. Again going 5-0. This time against a field of 35 players. Again a bunch of the fairly normal supporting stuff. Lord Solar, a command squad with Grand Strategist, a tank commander with a Demolisher Cannon, two Scout Sentinels and a Calidus Assassin. But beyond that there's really quite a lot of interesting units that we haven't seen so far. Kind of cool to see a Baneblade chassis on the board. This one a Bane Sword. That's the one with the big strength 16, high AP and damage 4. It's got the pretty hilarious rule to allow you to have the chance of it auto exploding a vehicle on a 3 plus if it kills something. In the right situation that could genuinely add up to kind of game changing damage if the opponent does cluster up too much around something big. That one looks like it's supported by a regimental engine seer for the repairs and the 4 plus invulnerable save. Will be very hard to take that out. I feel like these really big super heavies though are a little bit terrain dependent depending on what map you're playing on or the tournament's terrain rules. There are some terrain setups that they basically just can't move around at all and it can really limit them in some tournaments. Otherwise for the rest of the army there's a big block of Cadian shock troops for the infantry. It looks like they'd be with the Cadian command squad for the 6 plus feel no pain. There's another infantry squad maybe to babysit Lord Solar and then a unit of 5 Tempestus Scions. 
dropping in probably to do secondaries and things with hotshot volley guns and plasma guns. Finally, there's a big and stompy two units of armoured sentinels, one squad with las cannons and one squad with plasma, plus the usual upgrades like chainsaws and hunter killer missiles. It looks like these guys could be particularly good targets for that reinforcement stratagem if they're ever shot down. Being able to regenerate 210 points worth of sentinel onto the board will be really quite painful, particularly as these guys are just enormously tough in the first place. 7 wounds at toughness 7 with a 3 plus save is really going to be a pain to get through for how many points they cost. Overall looks really fun, the big tank I'm sure will be absolutely great to play with. You would have to make some very big decisions as to how it was going to be used each turn though. It would definitely be a different flavour of list with one really big gun and then a whole bunch of supporting units. In any case, it's really interesting to see what skilled guard commanders out there are choosing to bring along in each army list. There are definitely some common staples, but things do vary a bit beyond that, often having at least some tanks, and usually some artillery at least, which maybe isn't the worst place for guard to be in perhaps. As always, let me know what you think of the armies, or if you have any other particular insights as to how the lists were played that I might have missed. Obviously these aren't my lists, and player skill is certainly the major factor in getting these across the line. Even with an optimal list for guard, you're still going to need to play it absolutely perfectly. In any case though, if you've enjoyed the video then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, I do tend to post new ones just about every day, I'm sure we'll have more for the guard. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.